so by showing you the data is F naught from TD cross RD to zero plus infinity, such that the integral over TD cross RD of F naught dx dv is one. The integral over TD cross RD of v square f naught dx dv is less than plus infinity. And uh, we want to construct, find f from 0 infinity cross td cross rd to zero infinity, satisfying dt of f plus divergence x vf equal to the temperature to the power p, the divergence v f gradient V log of F divided by MF where F of T rho of Tx is the integral over Rd of F of T xv dV F of Tsv is a little f of tsv divided by rho of tx and uh, u f is the integral over rd of v f dv theta f is 1 over d the integral over rd of v minus u f square f dv and mf is the Maxwellian 1 divided by 2 pi theta f to the power d over 2 the exponential of negative v minus uf square divided by 2 theta f and uh, the scheme consists in find solution of this, but uh, more importantly, we want the solution to be satisfied in the sense of distribution, and uh, we want the conservation of energy. So you mean what is the interpretation of this term? Yeah, it's also for cohesion, because then in the case of Boltzmann equations, I need to give an interpretation of the statistics of the chemical you know, molecules, you know, the function that is the density of uh, molecules is just a region. And yes. also you have to account for the possibility of the collision between the molecules. So this I pl uh, appear in the study of plasma. I don't know how it is derived. Yeah. So this equation appears in plasma. Yes. And uh, this is conserved. V square F naught dx dv. 
Okay, so what? Yes. So the integral of this is zero. The first moment of this is zero, and the second moment of that is zero. The fact that the, the first the integral is zero ensure conservation of total mass. The first that the first moment is zero ensure conservation of the momentum. The first that uh, the second moment is zero and show conservation of the kinetic energy if a thing were smooth. Okay. So one of the, there are several difficulties when you try to solve this equation. One of the difficulties is to construct a solution such that the gradient V of log of F divided by mf square f dx dv is finite. Okay, to have a such a regularity result. And another difficulty is, a very serious difficulty is, a, this term is not linear, that term is not linear. If you have an approximate, an approximate solution by a scheme, uh, when you pass to the limit, how do you show that uh, this uh, expression converge? So my first calculation, I would like to show that uh, this is a constant, E naught, which is given, which is given by F naught. I would like to show that uh, the entropy of F is bounded below. So I, I would like to show that uh, if I take the set of, if I look at F log F, TD cross RD, and I look at the infimum of this, subject to the condition that, uh, let me write uh, E of F is E naught. I want to show that uh, this is bigger than a constant which depends only on E naught. So the entropy cannot become very small if I know I have a control of the second moment. And uh, this is what I call E of F here. Okay. So let us start entropy. against second moment. Assume F is a function from TD cross RD to zero plus infinity. It is a probability density. And the integral over TD cross RD of F V square DS DV equal to E naught. I want to write uh, a lower bound on the entropy of F. So write F equal to rho F, <coughs> where rho S is by definition the integral over Rd of uh, <coughs> F of Sv dv. And capital F is uh, little f divided by rho by definition. So when I write uh, the integral over Td cross Rd of F log of F ds dv, this is the integral over Td cross Rd of rho, capital F, log of rho, plus log of capital F. 
observe that uh, when you integrate uh, f with respect to v, little f with respect to v, you get a row. So if you divide by a row, you get one. So for each s, the integral of capital F uh, is uh, one. So if I use that property here, I see that this is the integral over td of rho, log of rho, ds, plus the integral over td cross rd of rho, f, log of f, ds, dv. OK. So let us look at a lower bound on this. If rho is less than 1, if z is less than 1, is in rho 0, 1, when you write a z, the absolute value of log z, this is uh, bounded by uh, a constant. So the supremum z between 0 and 1 of z log of z is finite. A naught is finite because this function is continuous on 0, 1. Therefore, the integral on Td of uh, rho, log of rho ds, will be the integral on the set where rho is less than 1, rho, log of rho ds, plus the integral on the set where rho is greater than 1 of uh, rho, log of rho ds. But uh, this is not negative. And uh, that is uh, bigger than, the first one is bigger than the integral on the set where rho is less than 1 of uh, negative a naught dx. This is bigger than or equal to negative a naught because uh, I am integrating on a set of measure less than or equal to 1. So I have a lower bound on uh, the first part. The integral over Rd of uh, f log of f dv, I do exactly what I did there is uh, bigger than the integral over Rd, the set where f is less than 1, of uh, f log of f dv. is bigger than negative that. So it remains to find an upper bound for the integral of this uh, positive number. So call this one, call this one, and call that two. But the integral on the set where f is less than one for each alpha in zero one there exists c alpha greater than zero such that z log of z in absolute value is less than c alpha z to the power alpha for every z in 0, 1. So here, all I need to worry about is uh, when z goes to 0. 
And I look at the ratio, this ratio when z is go to zero, I see that this is bounded, and so that inequality holds. Yes. The integral on the set where f is less than 1 of f log of the absolute value of f dv is less than the integral when f is less than 1 of uh, c alpha f to the power alpha dv. And I'm going to divide this integral into two parts. This is c alpha, the integral on the ball of radius r, intersection f is less than 1, f alpha dv, plus c alpha, the integral on the complement of the ball of radius r, intersection f is less than 1, f alpha dv. But uh, f to the power alpha will be less than 1. And so this integral will be less than the volume of the ball. So I can simply replace this by the volume of the unit ball multiplied by Rd. And so all I need to worry about is this. Call this 2, 3. Now, if I replace this set by a bigger set, I am going to preserve the inequality. And so that is correct, because I am integrating a non-negative function on a bigger set. Now I need to estimate that. But the integral on the complement of the ball, this is a very standard computation f alpha dv. This is the integral on the ball complement f alpha. I am going to multiply this by x and divide by, by v and divide by v dv. Okay? The absolute value of v is greater than r and so I can divide by v without any fear of this being zero. Now, I am going to use uh, Holder inequality with uh, p equal to 1 over alpha and q is 1 over 1 minus alpha. So when you integrate fg dv, it is less than the integral of f to the power p dv to the power 1 over p, the integral of g to the power q dv to the power 1 over q. So if I do that here, I get that this is less than the integral on the ball of uh, the complement of the ball, f alpha x v, the whole thing to the power 1 over alpha, to the power alpha dv, multiplied by the integral on the complement of the ball of uh, 1 over v, to the power 1 over 1 minus alpha dv to the power 1 minus alpha. And now I can compute explicitly this. If I replace that integral by the integral on the whole Rd, I have a, a, I still have a bound. So I can replace this by the integral on a bigger set. And uh, I can write what uh, this is. It is f v to the power 1 over alpha. So this is f v to the power 1 over, uh, over alpha dv. And you can guess that if I let <coughs> alpha go to 1, 
<coughs> this will be big enough, and so this will be small. You can check that it suffices if alpha is between 1 minus 1 over d and 1. You make the computation. So I go in polar coordinate. This integral will be the integral from r to plus infinity, r, r to the power d minus 1, r to the power minus 1 over 1 minus alpha dr. And you see that uh, if you impose that alpha is here, it makes uh, this thing finite. So if alpha is uh, between 1 minus d, 1 minus 1 over d, and 1, this, the integral on this complement, 1 over v to the power 1 over 1 minus alpha dv, 1 over alpha, is a certain constant, v of r, which is less than infinity. Hence, by four, the integral over BR complements of F to the power alpha dV is less than B R alpha. And now this. Think about alpha going to 1. 1 over alpha goes to 1. Therefore, so this condition tell me that uh, alpha is uh, greater than 1 half, right? So I am assuming that, assume that uh, the is greater than or equal to 2. I am excluding the case d equal to 2. This tells me that alpha is greater than 1 half. Therefore, 1 over alpha is uh, less than 2. I can control then v to the power 1 over alpha by 1 plus v squared. So this inequality is uh, clear if uh, v is uh, bigger than 1. And if this less than 1, it is also clear. So I can conclude that this is less than the integral over Rd of f multiplied by 1 plus v squared dv, which is b r alpha 1 plus the integral over Rd of uh, v square f d v. This together with 3 yields that uh, the integral f is less than 1 of uh, f, log of f in absolute value dv is less than c alpha omega d r to the power d c alpha multiplied by b r alpha multiplied by 1 plus the integral over Rd of v square f dv. Okay. Now I multiply that by rho. And I integrate 
integrating. We have the integral. F is less than or equal to 1 of uh, rho f log of f dx dv is less than c alpha r omega d r to the power d. So I have c omega d r to the power d. This integral is 1 plus c alpha b r alpha. That integral will be 1, 1, plus this integral will be E naught. Because by definition, rho multiplied by capital F is little f. And if I integrate uh, little f uh, against uh, v square dv, I get e naught. We conclude that if I use 2, this together with 2, call that uh, this is a constant depending on E naught, and depending on R greater than 1. So I can take R equal to 1. Okay. So now I, I fix R, and I fix my alpha. So I call this a constant depending only on E naught by 2. The integral. of uh, rho td cross rd of rho f log f dx dv is bigger than negative c e naught. Now I can use uh, I can use 1. This together with 1 yields that uh, the integral over Td cross Rd of uh, f log of f dx dv is greater than negative e, c of e naught minus a naught. And so we have a uniform control which is independent on F. So I have shown that the entropy is bounded below. If I show that it is bounded above, then it is bounded period, below and above. So since we are going to show that the entropy is decreasing, it will be bounded above. And that will show that the entropy is bounded below and above. Yeah. So let me recall the scheme. Reminder. Construct FK, FK tilde in that table. the following way. I start with uh, F1 tilde of XV equal to FK is FK minus 1 
of x minus hv v. And so since f naught is, is given, I can, this is telling me that I have f tilde 1 to start with. So define rho tilde k of x to be the integral over rd of fk tilde xv dv, capital F tilde k equal to F tilde k divided by rho tilde k. And uh, u k is, uh, u tilde k is uh, u F tilde k. And theta k tilde <coughs> is uh, theta F tilde k. And uh, I recall the definition of uh, u. u is the first moment, and theta is the temperature, which is uh, 1 over d by the variance. So today, uh, this is the first step, and then you have uh, what we call fractional steps to account for this term in the right hand side. And yes. You will do in a variational combination. Yes. So th this is the first mechanism, which is the streaming. And then uh, the variational problem correspond to the collision mechanics. In the variational, if I just to remind, you will do like the... The entropy plus the Wasserstein distance. But I'm going to write it. So let me write the discrete version of uh, this. Before I write the discrete version, let me note that f tilde xv is uh, fk minus 1, x minus hv, v. And if I write the Taylor expansion, this is fk minus 1, sv, minus h, gradient x, fk minus 1 sv v plus little o of h if everything is uh, small. So, so this is uh, the uh, uh, and then you have uh, this make uh, in general I would uh, the, the most naive scheme that one could conceive without the Yes. So, so when, when I, I do the first term and I have this expression, I want to show that uh, given a function here, this one has a solution. There is a solution to this equation. I want to be able to show I can solve this equation. Okay. So may, maybe let me write this line. If I write fk, xv minus fk tilde xv over h. This is uh, using that. This is fk xv minus fk minus 1 xv over h plus what is uh, here is there is a v dot plus gradient xv fk minus 1 plus little o of h. And so this is uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to time plus gradient x v f plus little o of h. This is what it is. So what I want to do is uh, I want to show that uh, this equation
I want to show that uh, given f k tilde, that equation has a solution. An, an, an implicit scheme. So we want to to find Yes. 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 So you want to find FK such that this is satisfied. But uh, asking that uh, may be too much. I will allow myself a capital O of H. And uh, furthermore, we want the kinetic energy of FK to be the kinetic energy of FK minus 1. So I want to solve this such that the integral over TD cross RD of uh, FK V square dx dV is the integral over TD cross RD of F0, FK minus 1 V square dx dV. And so by induction, this will be E naught, the kinetic energy of uh, the density at time zero. I am going to look for F, look for FK in the form FK of XV is rho tilde of K of X, F of FK of XV. In other words, I want rho tilde of K to be rho K. Because uh, I have always applied the mechanism on the, sp on the uh, space variable. And the next mechanism is uh, only on the velocity variable. So I am not going to change anything about the space variable. Now, you see that this is uh, rho k tilde fk minus fk tilde over h. And uh, I can replace fk by rho k tilde capital fk. So if I simplify by rho k tilde, it means that uh, the equation I want to solve is uh, this one. That is the equation I want to solve. So let us write what this means in the sense of uh, distribution fk minus fk tilde over h. Call that uh, equation 6. In the sense of distribution, Because uh, it is theta fk tilde, and uh, yes, because I also want uh, 
I don't want to change anything about the spatial variable, so I want the UK to be UK tilde and theta K to be theta K tilde. Yes. This is uh, like a conservation law, it's kind of conservation law in terms of spatial variable because D here will be a, like a spatial variable, right? Uh, yes. Variable, right? Yes. And then you display time and time, right? Yes. Then, uh, yes. Then it's just a, then it's just a kinetic scheme of Brenier, there's some connection here. Which, which scheme of Bruni? Well, when he introduced this kinetic formulation, I mean, it's say that it's the basic of the kinetic formulation, but he introduced that uh, as a scheme, uh, some discrete in time, like a step, like, so I don't know, he... For conservation law? Yeah. No, this is different. Because this equation, this, this scheme, the, the starting equation is uh, conservative, for sure, the kinetic equation. But uh, this, uh, this mechanism, the velocity vari variable, is dissipative. Yes. Yes. The uh, Jordan Kinder Lehrer and Otto is uh, they are solving this equation without that constraint. Without this constraint. Yes, without the constraint that they want to conserve. And the the constraint imposes uh, additional difficulty. Yes. Yes, it imposes uh, a major difficulty because uh, it because is. Uh, an independent paper to show that this variation are problem. So the, the first paper is, was not just the constraint, but the constraint problem took uh, easily six, seven pages. Six to seven? No, six to seven. Six to seven. Yes. Sorry. How do I know that? That what? To have the variation Actually, I have more than. I have more than that. Yes, I have more than that. So, what I am going to write? I am going to write that uh, this functional. This functional is convex. So I'm, I'll be computing the gradient of a convex function. Right. So it will be enough to show that uh, this is convex. And uh, a convex function is, uh, the gradient of a convex function is uh, not only on bounded variation, but uh, better than that. Right? The second, the, so if I take phi convex, the gradient of phi is local ellipsis. The second derivative of phi exists almost everywhere if phi is convex. And so I have bounded variation, but a little bit better than bounded variation. So in the sense of distribution, 6 means that uh, for every G of compact support of class C infinity on RD, I have the integral over 1 over H, the integral over RD of G F K minus F tilde K equal to I integrate by path negative the integral over R D gradient V of G F K gradient V of uh, the log of F K divided by M F K the inner product, Fk, plus little 
capital O of H. Capital O of H minus the integral over RD gradient V of G. This is what we want to show hold for every G. Okay. So I need to compute that. Reminder, the variational problem sets Fk to be the argmin. This is the variational problem we'll, we consider, the vastness distance square between F, K tilde, F divided by 2, H, theta K to the power P plus S of F, subject to the condition that U of F is UK tilde, theta F is theta K. So this is uh, the problem which corresponds to the collision mechanism. And uh, in fact, I, I just assume that uh, in this lecture, I just assume that this admit a solution. However, we wrote the Euler Lagrange equation, which is the following. Let TK from RD to RD be the gradient of a convex function and such that Tk pushes Fk forward to Fk tilde. So this is the optimal map in the Mosh problem. And the distance square between Fk tilde and Fk equal to the integral over Rd of V minus Tkv square Fk V dv. So we shown that we show that T K of V minus V divided by H theta K to the power P equal to so theta K theta K tilde equal to the gradient V of the log of Fk divided by M Fk minus V minus Uk divided by theta K, the vast western distance square between Fk tilde Fk divided by 2dH, 2dH. Okay, so what I said uh, earlier, so coming back about the regularity point you raised, this is uh, the gradient of a converse function. Therefore, it is uh, BV, and uh, the derivative exists almost everywhere. This implies that uh, this is BV, right? because this is a linear functional in V. This is linear, and so this is BV. Call this seven. Okay. So maybe let me pause here and uh, make uh, the, the following comment. When you are studying a parabolic equation, and this discretization corresponds to a parabolic equation, when you are studying a parabolic equation, and uh, you have uh, a base operator is. Uh, So the fact that it is parabolic corresponds to the fact that this operator is accretive or something like that. What is very crucial to make things work is the energy inequality. 
right? So this is the big difference between uh, if, you take a, if you take a PD of the divergence form, where it is a D of F over DT is divergence of A, DT of F is a divergence of uh, A, gradient of F. A, uh, positive definite matrix, then uh, it gives you the, an energy identity which gives you enough uh, regularity when you don't have uh, this energy identity. So what I am saying is uh, uh, give up the fact that uh, this matrix is uh, positive definite, then uh, your theory fall, uh, fall apart, right? Or just simply. Take this to be of class uh, C infinity A. It is not definite positive, your theory fall apart. So what is uh, crucial is the energy identity. So I want to write an, the energy identity as a simple consequence of this and as a simple consequence of uh, This one. So how did you come up with this minimization? So it was inspired by the work of Jordan, Kinderlera, and Otto, who observed that uh, the homogeneous focal Planck equation, when you don't have the x variable, correspond to this scheme but where you don't impose these constraints. It, it came from uh, the paper. This paper of authors was after, after the paper he wrote uh, about this uh, gradient growth for the positive equation. It was before. before. The paper of Jordan, Kinderlera, and Otto is before. Before, and then he wrote this one about the Yes, the, the one of geometric, the amount of on geometric, uh, uh, yes, the, 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 he, he, he was talking about polymorphic medium. Yes, many of the arguments are formal, but they have been made rigorous by Ambrosio, Gigli, and Savari. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me come back to what I was saying about accretive here. Look at the ODE. S dot equal to f of x. Right. Look at that OD. And uh, take f. Assume I am in an infinite dimensional space, uh, on a Hilbert space. Take f is of class uh, C infinity. Or impose any regularity condition you want you don't know that uh, you have a long time existence solution for that uh, equation. However, if f is Lipschitz, then you have uh, a long time, you have, you have a short time re uh, regularity, even if f is Lipschitz. Okay. Now, replace this by f is uh, the gradient of a function. Assume that uh, your function is of class uh, C infinity. You still don't know that you have a long time existence result. Now, assume that uh, phi is convex. Phi convex. Then uh, you have uh, a long time existence result. And uh, what is uh, hidden behind that is uh, the energy identity. So you can understand uh, the crucial root of the energy identity with uh, such a simple equation. Now, do something simple. Take f equal to the gradient of phi and rotate that by an angle phi over 2, which gives you a Hamiltonian system. Then there, you still don't know that you have a long-term 
existence result. And so the energy inequality is hidden here. And this is what gives you a long-term existence result. So when you are, talk, when you are studying, yes? then I have a long-term existence result. Yes. So without any, so in general, it was the car theory with the leaf shift continuity, right? But even if you have leaf shift, it gives you a local existence result, a short time. It gives you a short time. Even a leaf shift, you can extend, uh, extend uh, so the, uh, globally leaf shift, you can extend uh, if you don't know that, uh, if you don't know that f is bounded. No, if it is global, if you extend the theorem of the curve, it gives you the global existence. Okay, if, if, if even in infinite dimension. Yes, of course. It doesn't depend on the. The argument is exactly the, the, the fixed point theorem. You locally you can extend. Yes, but when you yes, but you need to control you need to control that uh, x doesn't become large. Yeah, but if it's global if you are saying global if then you're done because this is a local argument. As long as you can extend a certain size which does not depend on the position where you are, then it's fine. What is surprising here when you In the, in the finite dimension space, yes, yes. So it would be global. You mean in infinite or in finite? In, in, infinite. Yes, yes. In 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 infinite. Infinite for a model of continuity, it is global in if shift. The model of continuity is uh, obvious uh, initial data. Which uh, what, uh, what, what are you talking about? Initial data. Global, global, global. Initial data. What do you mean? Uh, because it, no, he's talking about ODE, not uh, there is no other variable except T, ODE. If it is an ODE, then there's this, thing. there is this very classical theorem of uh, car and other people that says if you have uh, deep sheets, then you can extend the thing forever. Okay, so you need to show me, you need to show me that, that, that will be. Finite dimensional. You are saying in infinite D? It doesn't depend on the dimension, this argument. If it is, does it depend on the, the dimension? This, uh, no. No, it depends if the dimension is finite it's, or infinite. Even if, uh, in, in a me, uh, I think in metric space, because deep sheet continuity is just a metric space, even a metric space, if, you, if it is deep sheet, you can extend the solution forever. Oh, oh, okay, so, so you... Let, let's, okay, yeah. this is a classical stuff, we may check after that, but this is in uh, all basic books. Uh, okay, you're we... saying that here you're saying that uh, you are not assuming leaf shifts, right? No, no, I am not assuming leaf shifts, and I am, I am saying even if I assume class infinity, even if I assume class no, infinity, I don't... Yes. So, but uh, here you are not assuming that, right? I am not assuming that it is. Not assuming that, of course. Yeah. You are just assuming that it's 
gradient of a convex minus the gradient of a convex function. Yes, I am assuming that to have a, a long time, yes, a global existence result. And what's the argument here for the global existence? Uh, so, so convexity gives you the energy identity. And the energy identity is something I want to write in this case in infinite dimension. But uh, the, the strategy in infinite or finite dimension is exactly the same thing. So let us recall the following inequality. So the relative entropy of F with respect to G is the integral of F log of F over G. And uh, H of uh, F tilde K, knowing the Maxwellian of F uh, tilde K, minus H of uh, FK, knowing the Maxwellian FK, is uh, bigger than or equal to the integral over Rb of uh, the gradient V of the log of F k divided by M F k. So if I call T k the optimal map, T k minus identity F k. And uh, we add it to that uh, 1 over theta k, the versus and distance between f k, tilde k, and f k. Okay, so this explains the appearance of the versus time distance Because this sf includes already that term, right? The, 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 the sf is the S is the that integral, right? S F somehow. I S of F is the, the entropy, the integral of F log F. Yeah, and this so this S F somehow includes that the integral there, right? Accounts for that. Uh, yes. So you see, when you have a, it's natural the appearance of this S F because we see the gradient of. Like the, the, the oil -like equation or the oil -like no, in fact, what we did, uh, what we did uh, uh, yesterday was uh, we showed that uh, the entropy was uh, converse along geodesic. And uh, so we look at the function t goes to s f t. We also look at the function t goes to the integral of f t v square over two, these two functions. And we show that uh, the entropy is converse along geodesic. Call this uh, alpha one of t, call that alpha two of t. So the convexity mean alpha one of uh, one minus alpha one of zero is greater than alpha prime one of zero. And the convexity of this mean alpha two one minus alpha 2 of 0 is greater than alpha prime 2 of 0. But we show that uh, the second derivative of this is uh, bigger than the Wasserstein distance between f tilde k and f k. Convex of T to S, F, T, 
Okay. okay. So look at the problem in the v variable only, right? Because this is what we are we are studying. I am saying that uh, this can be interpreted as a gradient flow of the entropy with respect to the Wasserstein distance. Okay. So what is the complexity of this function? Okay. Okay, so now let us come back. This is why I was uh, pointed out what happened in the finite dimensional case. I have a gradient flow. When you have an equation like that, s dot equal to negative gradient phi of x, this is a gradient flow. Assume I am in Hilbert space. This is a gradient flow of phi with respect to the norm of the Hilbert space. Okay, now. If I know that this phi is convex, it gives me some additional property on, uh, on the x. Here, I am looking at the gradient flow in the infinite dimension. I am looking at the gradient flow of the entropy with respect to the Wasserstein distance. And then we check that uh, this functional is uh, convex. But convexity on a manifold means convex along geodesic. But this is T, T is, uh, is, uh, is variable. T is a real variable, right? T is a real yes, variable. yes. And here you have X. X is a, an element of the, the Hilbert space or the Banach space, I don't know. So o okay, let, let us look at one, not both at the same time, because this is in a Hilbert space, this is in the Wasserstein space. Yes, but the convexity is appearing in a completely different context uh, in both cases, right? So here is a convex function in the infinite dimensional space, and here is a convex function in the real value, as a real value. No, in the Wasserstein space. Because T goes to F of T is the geodesic. This is a path in the set of probability measure. So it's a pathwise convexity that you are. So when you show that, you show that in, along each path, then this functional S is convex, then this means that it is convex in the whole uh, term. No, by definition, a convex function on a manifold mean any time I take a geodesic. By definition, this is the definition of convexity. Uh, in a, in, yes, in a manifold. Uh -huh. And if you, if you, so if, if I am on a vector space, what are the geodesic? Yeah. The geodesic are T goes to A plus TB. The geodesic are the straight line. If you are on a manifold, you replace the straight line by the geodesic. Along the geodesic, uh, it is a, it uh, is a convex function from R to R. Uh, that I was not understanding at all, which is why the crazy thing that you are checking this convexity in T, and you are talking about convexity of a function of T. Now yeah, yeah. things we can contribute. OK. We want to check that this S is a convex function of oh. some manifold in the space of magnitude. Yes, yes. And in fact, this is what we proved yesterday, right? We proved that if I differentiate twice the entropy along the geodesic, I get something which is positive. And the second derivative being positive is equivalent to convexity. Not just like a crazy man. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now we got this light. Oh, okay.
we are in the light now. So there's a manifold and you proved yesterday that it's S is a convex functor, over the manifold. Yes. By definition, convex means in a manifold that if you go along the geodet, then the corresponding function from T to S F T yes. is Be because convexity on a norm space mean uh, S of uh, 1 minus T A plus T B is less than 1 minus T S of A plus T S of B. Right? So in, 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 the, in uh, a manifold, then you need to give a meaning to that in this geodesy. Yeah, so more, more importantly, we, what we did last time Manifold is also somehow some, uh, but this ma it is a set in a space of measure, right? That manifold is a set of measure. It's a set of measure, yes, right? Yes. But this manifold also, you do not have any differential structure or thing like that. It's a generalization of the focus of the manifold, right? Yes, so you, so have, you have it. Manifold, in general, you need uh, some differential structure. Y y yes, di you have a differential structure. But that is not enough, because in manifold, uh, you need uh, to have a local representation using shafts. Yeah. So you have, you have a differential structure in the vast extent space, but you don't have a local representation. Well, what I mean by differential structure would be this local shaft that you go from some, uh, at least from some uh, linear space or something like that to that, uh, yeah, some linear space. You, you have a differential structure in the sense that you can differentiate functional. Right, you, you you know how to differentiate functional. Okay. Yeah. So what I wanted to to say is uh, it it is uh, important to understand uh, what I did uh, yesterday. I showed this uh, the convexity of the entropy and the convexity of the second moment gave uh, this and. Uh, we, we show that the log sobolev inequality and Talagran inequality is a direct consequence of that, right? So yesterday I have a row naught, row one, row naught, and then I show that if I take a row here and I take the Gaussian there, I get the Talagran inequality. If I take the Gaussian here and I take a row, here, I get the log Sobolev inequality. So just to complement that, guy, so the difference, the, the, the difference would be that locally this space, this manifold is just a metric space, not a Banach space. Right? Yes. It, it is a length space. It is? A length. A length, length space. space. So it is a metric it's space. Metric, yes. It is a metric space with the additional property that Whenever I give myself two points, I have a, a geodesic of minimal length connecting these two points. So you are, you, you are really using that and all this stuff to, 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 to solve your minimization problem, right? Yeah, say, what, what is going to guide your proof if of this idea? Right? So I don't need to prove that I have a length space. I don't need to prove all of these things to, to do what I am doing. But uh, uh, what is going to guide you in what do I do next? Is that behind your head you, you want to mimic what happened in the finite dimensional case? For instance, when you look for the in, um, energy identity, it is because in finite D you, see, you know how the energy identity helps you. And so... You try to write it here and see it will, if it will help you. So the, this is a crucial part of everything. So I think if we are in the last, uh, in the last few minutes of our course, so this, at least, more, more important than the calculation would be the strategy. So I didn't get this really this 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 point, this crucial point. Let's say you have something that is guiding you, right? That is this convexity behind the thing. In finite, you say in finite dimension, 
I know that if I have this convex, I have this energy it, uh, identity, right? Yes. Which is just to multiply the differential equation by the, by x, for instance, and you have the d dx of the modulus of x is equal to so or, or not, so, or something different than that. Because when you say I, I'm energy identity, I think that for the modulus, the square modulus of x over 2, the difference with respect to time, and if you multiply the gradient of a convex equation by x, scalar product, then you have some positivity there. So you have you have that the integral of this square modulo over 2 is decreasing, and this means that you can also have your your your, your equation. And this holds also in this Banach Banach or Hilbert spaces. So if you are in a Hilbert space then you have this scalar product and uh, this energy makes sense and this proves your 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 assertion about the, the, the being able to extend the solution forever okay. for all time. This is absolutely true. If you have the gradient of uh, convex function in a Hilbert space, then this equation dx dt equal to minus the gradient of uh, phi of x has solution everywhere just because this is a zero argument that they multiply by x the scale of product and then you have this decrease of the model of x uh, over two. Okay, so, so let me describe the finite decays or the Hilbert space. Let, let me describe the Hilbert space. So phi convex. I want to solve x dot equal to negative gradient phi of x. So let us assume that phi is a, a plus c1 to avoid some technical. Now, crucial part. Recall that p0 is the gradient of phi s0. This is the same thing as phi of x is greater than phi of s naught plus p naught. So, so, so I know how to make my proof work. I don't know how to make your proof work. Well, <laughs> if you multiply by x, then you have the decrease of the, the modulus of uh, y Yes, I don't know how this gives you convergence, what you are suggesting. I know how to prove convergence. Conver Yes, I want to show how global convexity action. give me the global existence. If you have the decrease of the, the, the modulus of x squared, so this means that your solution will not, never blow up. It will be all, if you start in a ball of radius r, the solution will always be in a ball of radius r, and this allows you to extend the solution forever. Okay, so what I, I know how to do is uh, to construct an approximate so solution that is easy, right? You don't even need convexity, it's easy. And then you want to prove convergence of the scheme. This is what, is what we call the Yapunov function. The Yapunov function means whenever you have a differential equation, you have a Yapunov function, then you are done. That is probably true, but I don't know how to do that. So these are three properties are equivalent. This is equivalent to that for every x, which is equivalent to phi of x naught plus the illusion transform p naught is S not P not. Okay. So if I want to solve this equation according to that, it is telling me that uh, I want to solve phi of x plus phi star 
of negative s dot equal to negative s dot x. So if I can solve this equation according to this, it means that I have solved that equation. Now, this is a negative d over dt s square over 2. And so I want to solve the equation the integral from 0 to t, phi of x plus phi star of negative s dt equal to s naught square over 2 minus s t square over 2. The inequality, this inequality, phi of a plus phi star of b is bigger than a b. This is true for every a b. So if I want to prove equal equality here, it is equivalent to proving this. And so, if I can solve this, uh, I can prove that inequality, then uh, I have proven this, which means I have proven that. And that is the energy inequality. Now, take a, an approximate sequence. Take an approximate sequence. Assume that uh, Sn converge weakly to S, S dot N converge weakly to S. This function is uh, convex, therefore this integral is lower semi-continuous. That functional is convex, this integral is lower semi-continuous. When you pass to the limit, you have that the limit, the integral from zero to t, phi of Sn plus phi star of negative s dot n dt is bigger than the integral from 0 to t of phi of x plus phi star of negative sn dot negative sn dt. And uh, this is less than s dot n square. Note that uh, this is going in the right direction because of the negative sign, and I have st square over 2. Therefore, if I breed uh, a discrete uh, approximator sequence, because of convexity, then uh, passing to the limit, I get uh, the inequality I want. And the reverse inequality comes for free. And uh, so this is uh, energy inequality, which make you get uh, convergence of solution based on convexity. Now, if you replace a phi, converse by phi um, of class C infinity, uh, none, of these, uh, none of this approach will work, uh, will go through. And this makes a big difference between convexity and uh, lack of convexity. So I computed this last time. Let me compute it again. H of f, knowing mf, is by this definition, the integral of f log of f divided by mf over rd. This is the integral of f log of f over rd minus the integral of f log of mf. Let us recall that mf of v is uh, 1 divided by 2 pi theta to the power d over 2 f exponential negative v minus uf square 
over 2 theta f. And so log of mf is negative d over 2 log of uh, 2 pi theta f minus v minus uf squared over 2 theta f. So if I integrate the f, this is uh, the integral of f. And this gives negative d over 2 log of 2 pi theta f minus. You can see that uh, this integral is d theta f, so I am left with uh, d over 2. So what I want to observe is uh, f log of mf depend only on the temperature. Therefore, if these two things have the same mass wellian, that difference will be S F K tilde minus S F K. Because uh, the expression I am going to subtract from here is the same expression I am going to subtract from there. No, this is uh, to write the energy inequality. And uh, we'll see how this gives you uh, a strong smoothness property. Well, just, you know, the, 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 the minimization of this problem, so you're saying that the solution, this Fk will be the solution of that uh, equation, Fk minus Fq over A g equals to that guy without this low phase. You are defining this FK as the yeah, I am defining FK as this uh, minimizer, and I want to check that uh, it satisfies this property in the sense of distribution. And uh, I also want to check that uh, uh, this thing is uh, in L2. So the, the, gradient, the gradient is in L2. I want to check that I have enough regularity. I want to know that this is not just uh, in the distributional sense. It is a, I, I want to know that what is I am differentiating is uh, really differentiable. Yes. So this makes sense in almost everywhere in V, for instance. Almost ev everywhere on the set where F is positive. Yes. 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 Okay. And this, because uh, I mean, that, that is uh, something that you emphasize since the, 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 the beginning of everything is that the vastness time distance uh, was important. And here is not uh, exactly, and I see that the vastness time di distance appears. Normally, in a minimization problem, before this, uh, this theory of optimal transportation, there was also a the theory for solving this uh, nonlinear parabolic equation, right? Uh, they become precise, you know, then accretive, and everything. Right? And uh, so there is a minimization of it. But now you, you put also, it appears this, this vast side. What's the big difference here is that uh, now you, you have to, to go through all these arguments of uh, geometry, metric, space. Brazis cannot apply here. Well, he solved it, of course. This is the grand down, Brazis, now all these things. Okay, so let, let me tell you something. The first distribution of solution of uh, kinetic focal Planck, we got it. No, and no. We, so I am telling you, Brazis, Brazis cannot solve uh, this. Uh, this Yes. Uh, I'm trying to understand. I mean, uh, of course, you arrive at that, an equation that looks it's a parabolic equation, like the photosmeter equation, right? Yes. We agree, right? Yes. 
So here, we are here in this point here. And it is in this point that you are going to use those ideas of, uh, these ideas of uh, maximal transportation, everything, optimal transportation, right? It's here. Right? You discretize it, uh, you have this. What is the point here that makes it uh, impossible to use those arguments about uh, these, uh, like say, like Brazil style? Or I mean, nobody knows. Maybe you know. Brazis is on a Banach space. You have a converse functional on a Banach space, plus some property. Here, you have a weaker Riemannian manifold. And uh, uh, so, for instance, I'm telling you, if you, we solve it with p equal to 1, if you replace p by an over p, this is completely open. application of these uh, ideas of optimal transportation that we have been uh, studying all these days, right? So now it's an application. So the, why, so you saying that uh, uh, we, we, so up to, that, uh, up to that point there, what we have is, is an equation, a different, uh, differential equation, a partial differential equation of parabolic style, right? In, uh, in the, the unknown is the function f, fk, right? Yes. And it is in this point that you want to apply those ideas of uh, optimal transportation, right? I want to apply them here too. No, I mean, uh, this is, uh, we, we are going to, uh, so when you want to apply, uh, to, 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 to apply some idea, when I, in any case, so we, we want to, to understand why it's, why it's better, why it's important to use here uh, the, 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 all this uh, machinery of uh, optimal transportation. So in principle there, what you have is a discrete, uh, discrete equation time, right? Uh, and we want to find the that case. And uh, in the right hand side, what you have is an elliptic operator, which is, has some small degeneration because there is this log there. And F is log something. Yeah, so this is the this is the way you should you should view it. You want to solve an ODE. Okay. And uh, you have this idea that uh, if you can find uh, a structure, uh, if, if if you can uh, view this ODE as belonging to a space which has a structure a metric structure. Knowing that uh, um, in a Hilbert space, we see that convexity is uh, a very useful, which makes things easier to prove existence of solution. If you can find a differential structure and a functional, which is convex, for which this OD is a gradient flow, then uh, you, you, are, you, are, you will probably be able to solve it. Now, the question will be, uh, this structure, should it be the Wasserstein space or something else? It can be anything else. It can be the Wasserstein space. It can be anything. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the Wasserstein space. What one is looking for is uh, to, to look for a differential structure such that uh, the equation you, you have is uh, a gradient flow for a converse function. So if you look at the work of uh, the work of Mars uh, then most a good part of the work of Mars done by analogy to this. When he take a PD, he tried to show that uh, he has a, it, it, he tried to show that this is a Hamiltonian system or a Poisson-Strick system for 
a certain differential structure. Because uh, he knows that once he passed that step, he can use all the tools which are available for in symplectic geometry for trying to, to solve that. Uh, 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 At certain point, this thing communicate. I mean, there is some overlap, and then we can solve some uh, interesting problems. We are in a certain point here, this uh, optimal transportation. Somehow, this is uh, going on. I mean, we want to see if uh, optimal transportation will help to solve some equations that we are not able to solve. For instance, concerning fluid equations like uh, uh, Euler equations or things like that. So, I'm just trying to understand uh, uh, why the need or why it's interesting or what is important to now at that point, for instance, to start applying uh, this uh, machinery or these ideas of uh, uh, optimal transportation. No, I, I, I view things differently. This is the way I view things. You give me a PD. And I try to find uh, what is the space and what differential structure to put in the play space so that uh, I, I am able to solve the PDE. Right. So maybe it will be uh, the Wasserstein uh, space. Maybe it will be something else. Right. So, so, right. so any, any time you have a PDE, you try to see what is uh, Yes. Yeah, 
this day in now, now, now you can, yeah, because now you have this manifold and you wanna have you wanna put a metric and you show that the metric exists and you wanna know how to write the geodesic. And to be the answer for this question is given by the because no, the like distance is already uh, deep in the, the in the subject. I mean, if you have to use the Wasserstein just to recover the F to make it appear the F as the euler Lagrange function of uh, the thing, then uh, it's already optimal to compute. If you appear some function on that, that you can interpret as the, the minimization problem of uh, uh, Monge Cantorov. This is what. Uh, Okay, so let, let, me make a, let me make a comment. This equation, you can choose to solve it this way, for instance. I can choose an explicit scheme. Okay, once you do that, and then I try to prove convergence. Right? I don't know if you will arrive proving convergence. Okay, so. This is, this is what I am saying. When, when, I see, when I see an evolution equation, and many other people, when they see an evolution equation, they want to describe that as an ODE on a certain space. And uh, they want to see what is a good structure. For, for instance, Enrique en 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 has a, 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 a PDE. There, it will be very artificial to try to use the Wasserstein theory to, to solve that. Because the PD he has, when he writes it, it suggests a certain metric. Right? You look at the PD and it suggests a certain metric. So this is the metric you want to use. So one, one thing is uh, discover the metric and then check that this metric is appropriate. So, so I don't want to make it sound like a, I take a PD and I want to see if uh, the, I can use the Wasserstein theory to solve it. That would not be the good uh, approach. I take a PD and I want to see what is, the, what is the space which will be appropriate for solving this PD. And uh, from uh, the paper of Jordan, Kinder, and Otto, it suggests that uh, the Wasserstein space is uh, appropriate to that. And in fact, when you start doing that and you, you get uh, this convexity property, it tells you that you are probably on, a, on the right track. But if you start in L infinity. Okay. But, but, but do you want to just solve this? It depends. Do you want to just solve this or you want to solve it to. Yes, you want to solve this and use it in the kinetic equation, right? Oh, I don't see how you can. Uh, I, I don't see how you can solve the. Even let give you an initial data f not of class c infinity, right? And uh, let me take a p not equal to one. Uh, nobody knows how to solve the equation, so it shows that it doesn't have to do with uh, smoothness. Yes. Yes. I am so saying that uh, existence of distributional solution 
global existence of distribution of solution for the kinetic focal plank is an open problem. Yes. Of class C I infinity. I should, I, I should work on this uh, probability stuff. I don't know if you should work, but I, I, am, I, I am saying uh, uh, this, uh, this framework in P equal to 1 allow you to, to do it. Um, even in P, P equal to 2, we have some difficulty. P different from 1, we have some difficulty. So let me replace uh, T there, T minus identity. So I will have uh, S of FK tilde minus S of FK is greater than or equal to the integral over RD gradient V log of FK divided by M FK. The inner product with uh, this. So that will be H. I'll have H theta K to the power P. And I'll have uh, the square FK. And uh, then I will have this expression minus the integral over RD gradient V L F K divided by M K in a product with uh, V minus U K divided by theta K F K the distance square between F K tilde F K divided by two to D H and uh, I have a H here theta K and I'm going to add uh, 1 over theta K W square F K field F K and now I am going to compute this and discover that it is zero. Let us check why it is zero. So that is gradient of FK divided by FK because log of FK divided by MK is log of FK minus log of MK. So we computed the gradient of log of mk several times. It is d minus uk divided by theta k. So that is the gradient of log of fk divided by mk. Now I multiply that by f k. It is going to simplify with fk, and it is going to simplify with fk here. I write the inner product with V minus UK divided by theta K. And it will be the inner product with V minus UK divided by theta K. Now I'm going to integrate this over RD. Integrate that over RD. I integrate by parts. I get a negative D the integral over Rd of uh, Fk divided by theta k dv. Now I integrate this. I get uh, the integral of uh, V minus uk square divided by theta k square Fk dv. But I remember that if I integrate uh, V minus uk square Fk, I get uh, 
d theta k. I divide that by theta k squared, and I see that these two things vanish. So I end up with uh, s, s fk tilde minus s fk is maybe better to write it this way, bigger than the integral over rd of h theta k to the power p gradient v log of fk divided by m fk square fk plus 1 over theta k with a certain distance between fk and fk t. OK? So I want to, this is where I want to draw the at attention. Here, if I have a theta k to the power p, that would be good for, uh, we are entering in the detail. And this is where we have the problem. This is where we have to give up general k, p and take a p equal to 1. Now, see what is uh, here. We have proven that uh, the entropy is uh, bounded uh, below. This is telling me this term is non-negative. It is telling me that the entropy is decreasing. Therefore, the entropy is bounded above, below. And so this expression is bounded. Now, so I can, I can ignore it uh, and subtract a constant. Now, it is telling me that uh, this expression, this integral is also bounded, and that integral is uh, bounded. Now, I want to get uh, here and see that uh, the term which are going to appear, a term like this is going to appear, a term like that is, is going to appear. So I am going to finish in five minutes. Let me just uh, compute. Let me just establish that. This relation can be written as the integral over Rd of G of Tk Fk is the integral over Rd of G Fk tilde for every G. So let me conclude that 1 over H, the integral over Rd of G F minus K minus G Fk tilde dv is, uh, let me forget the 1 over h. The integral over Rd of G Fk minus the integral over Rd of G F tilde k. Now I am going to use this property that uh, G F tilde k is the integral of G Tk Fk to write that uh, this is the integral over Rd of G Fk minus the integral over Rd of uh, G of Tk Fk. Now I can write this as the integral over Rg of uh, G of V minus G of Tk of V Fk of V dV. Now let me compute uh, G of Tk of V. This is G of V plus the gradient of G of V in a product Tk V minus V plus one half the second gradient of uh, G at a certain point. I'll call it V tilde. Tk V minus V in a product Tk V minus v. Note that uh, if I take g of class C infinity of compact report, this is bounded by a constant, which depends only on g. 
and that is bounded by TKV minus V square. So if I integrate that and I use the fact that uh, I use the fact that uh, the integral of uh, v minus tk v square fk is the vast system distance. This integral, when I integrate this against fk, it will be a capital O of the vast system distance square. So let me substitute that uh, here. Hence, the integral over rd of uh, g. Fk minus g f tilde k dv equal to. I want to compute gv minus gtv. So gv minus gtv, I am going to move this to that side. It will be negative the integral over rd of the gradient of gv tkv minus v. Fk plus a capital O of the vast system distance square between Fk and Fk tilde. And I'm going to substitute uh, T V minus V by what it is. So that will give me minus the integral over Rd gradient G V gradient V log of F K divided by M F K and uh, I will have uh, H theta K to the P minus H theta K to the P fk dv plus this minus plus the integral over rd of v minus uk divided by theta k in a product with the gradient of g of v fk of v dv. So if I plus capital O of the vast system distance square between Fk and Fk tilde. This expression will behave like a h square. I need to multiply by h. I need to multiply this by h theta k to the power p. And uh, I forgot uh, I forgot W2 square Fk tilde Fk divided by 2 dH plus capital O W square Fk tilde Fk. So this will behave like a H square because of the distance between Wk tilde and Vk tilde and fk will be of order h. This will behave like a h square. I divide by h, it will behave like a h. And so I have, I have the PD I want in the distribution of sense plus a capital O of h. Now, proving that uh, is uh, proving rigorously that this is a capital O of H. So what, what I did there is not completely rigorous because I have capital O of H depending on X. What I should do is uh, integrate everything with respect to X. 
and then show that I have a, a capital O of H, which doesn't depend on the variable. And uh, I, will get, uh, I will get the discrete uh, focal plot equation. Now, the next step uh, will be to prove convergence of the nonlinear term in the focal plot equation. And that is uh, a difficult part, uh, which also requires a lot of effort. So I am going to stop here. Yes. 